Assalamu alaikum students, this is Farwa Batul, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to my channel Learn to Teach. In this video, we are going to talk about decomposition of a problem and why there is a need to decompose it. Okay, whenever we have a problem in computer systems, then it's better to decompose your problem into its components. Why? The word decomposition means to break down. Let's talk about this breaking down. We have already gone through the top-down design that is breaking down of a system into subsystems into more subsystems until you get a smaller subsystem that is performing a single task. In the same way, we divide a problem, a big problem, because you know that in a prog program development lifecycle, PDLC, we have learned a stage that is called analysis. Analysis means to clearly define a problem, clear definition, and also to find out the requirement specification, what is required, uh, what is the solution that needs to be uh, achieved. So in order to uh, solve a problem, if we divide a big or a complex problem into its a smaller task, into a smaller units, like Actually, the problem can be divided into this, 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 and this. And this particular thing can be further divided into this and this. So it's easier to understand the problem. It's easy to get a solution because these smaller problems can be figured out more easily than working on a big problem. So this is a general practice. A general practice is whenever you have a big task to perform, what you basically do, you divide that big task let me just write over here, the big task, divide the big task into smaller task. It is how you solve a problem or break down a problem into task one, task two, task three, task four. And if you feel that these tasks are big enough that they can be further divided, so just divide task one into further task, task 1.1 and task 1.2 and so on. Why we do this division? Because this becomes more easy to achieve your desired result. Why? Because you can just assign these smaller tasks to different people. You can assign it to the user developer one, to the developer two, so it means that when you divide your task, a problem into task, and then ta that task can be achieved by giving them to different uh, people so that they can work independently. And once all the tasks are being done by different people, then you have to merge them. Merge them so that you get the desired output. Merge all these smaller tasks that are done by different people independently join them all together and get the desired result. This is easy because this is the save of time. Here you are saving your time to dividing a big task into people to, by making it a smaller task. Saving time and it's easier to achieve a solution in this way. It is very, very general that it is, it's very easy to understand that if you divide a big problem, you, it takes a lot of time to understand a complex problem in its own. But if you start dividing the problem into its smaller things or smaller parts, so just solve this first, then solve this first, solve this first, one by one, you can easily solve that. And then you, at the end, achieve your solution. So this is why we need to decompose the problem. Why? Because this gives us clear understanding of the problem and also the solution becomes more easier to achieve. Now, let's talk about that. If we have a problem in a computer system, then how we can divide it into its components? Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that what are the components of a computer system in which a problem can be uh, divided or can be decomposed. Just follow the video. Here I'm going to share the components of a problem where uh, that you can divide a problem into.
Okay, so here we go. These are the components in which your problem can be decomposed. The very first is the input. What are inputs? Inputs are the data that can be used by the system that needs to be entered while the system is active. In short words, it is the data that is taken from the user. If the user is using your application or a software, so whatever it gives input to the system, that data is known as inputs. Then you are going to process that data. Processing means to work out on the inputs that are given by the user or if you have any stored data in your system, so you can also work out on that stored data. Process it and give the outputs. What is the output? Output is basically whatever you show on your screen after processing to a user that is your output. And finally, we have a storage. Storage or storing data is done when the data is very important and you want it to use in future. So you store that particular data in an appropriate medium. So these are the four components where you can just break down a problem. You can read the definition of each of these inputs, processes, outputs, storage in detail from your book as well. Now, let me just discuss an example of an alarm application that is also in your uh, book, uh, the second edition by David Watson and Helen Williams. Let's talk about that alarm application in detail. To make you understand that how we can uh, get a solution of a particular problem or how we can sort out a given problem that is related to computer systems. Okay, so this is an alarm application. We are going to divide an alarm application or let's just say that we are building an alarm application in order to sort out a problem of alarms. We want to uh, just develop this for mobile or uh, of course for mobile because we use alarm apps in mobile. So how are we gonna be making this application and how are we gonna be dividing it into its component parts to make it understand. Yes, so the very first thing we have learned is inputs. Divide your system that you wanna develop into inputs, processes, outputs, and storage. So the very first is divide it into inputs. Figure out that what would be the input of your system. So in alarm application, the input will be time to set alarm. The user is going to set the time for the alarm. Like he wants to wake up at seven, at eight, at nine a.m. He is going to set the time for it. So it is something that is given by, that will be given by the user to the system. The second thing, user can remove any alarm from his system or he can switch off his alarm or he can press the snooze button. When he gets the sound of alarm, so he has two options for it, either to off the alarm or to press the snooze button. So this is what a user is going to give uh, as an input to the alarm application. Now let's talk about the processes. What can be an alarm app is used to process? First of all, uh, an alarm application needs to check for the current time and the alarm time. If he it's having any alarm in its storage, so is gonna be the application is going to be checking for alarm time and the current time continuously until when the time becomes equal, the current time equals to the alarm time, then it is producing a sound as an output for the user. So this is one process for an alarm application. The other process is to store and remove the alarm times. When a user gives an alarm time, so it needs to be stored in the alarm application. So this is something that is a process done by an alarm application to store the alarm time and also to remove the alarms that is not needed by the user. And finally, the management of snooze. When the user is going to press the snooze button, so this will be processed by the alarm application. Then after that, when the snooze time is expired, then it is going to ring or make a sound again. This is the processes of alarm application. Now let's talk about output. Whenever the current time becomes equal to the alarm time, so the application is going to produce a sound or a tune that is set by the alarm application. At alarm time after snooze time expires, it is going to make a sound 
at the alarm time and when the snooze time becomes expired let's suppose the snoozing is for 10 minutes so after alarm time it will calculate the 10 minutes and then it will make a sound again this is the output of an alarm application in form of a tune next we have storage what an alarm application needs to store in order to use the very important it needs to store the alarm time that is given by the user because if it is not going to store the 7 a.m the 8 a.m the 3 p.m whatever the time the user gives then it will not be able to process it the current time equals to alarm time so for this for processing it needs to store the information that is given by the user this is how you can divide your problem or your uh, program that you want to develop into its con its components or its uh, task that you want to do so thank you so much for watching this video in this video we have learned about the decomposition of a problem why we need decomposition what are the components to decompose a problem and how we can achieve a better solution thank you so much so much for watching it in the next video we are going to talk about methods used to design and construct a solution to a problem and formally we are going to start structure diagrams flowcharts and pseudo codes in that thank you so much for watching it stay tuned stay connected and please do not forget to subscribe Bye-bye.